as day breaks, the creatures of the house emerge from their cobwebs and cocoons to prowl the corridors. Lady Grimface, hunting for specks of dust invisible to the ordinary eye, with which to berate the hapless Saint Agnes. Agnes? And then there is Miss Constantly Bothered, as yet another music teacher flees the house. Still, the sound of her playing scares the mice away, along with her brother, who hides wherever he can. Meanwhile, Saint Agnes, still only provisional housekeeper, continues her daily battle for dominion over the underworld with provisional cook, Miss Sheila Woodby. I thought I'd ask for this area to be kept tidy. This is the laundry yard, which is the housekeeper's job. It's the kitchen yard. The cook's job. I fear that one day they will square off for a duel, armed with mop and broom. And dear Giddy up fussing about with his pots and plants. Washed and pressed. And I've sewn the pocket. It's your old valet jacket. I'm not a valet. I'm a gardener. A groundsman. Since Jack left, I'm a groundsman. Coax daily by his beloved to climb the social steps when his heart belongs to the great outdoors. But nothing is so terrifying to the squirrels and bats and the ordinary mortal maids and servants. What on earth is this doing here? It's for cleaning. Well, don't just leave it where anyone could walk into it. As the master of the house, Mr. Colander, always under strain as, as time and money, money slip, slip away. Colander? As in the cooking utensil, the... Uh, the strainer. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's very good. Are you sure Mr. Canada won't be angry? He knows your pursuits. He's encouraged them, hasn't he? Then he should be where we have a writer in the house. It'll do us all good to have some fun poked at us. I'll read it to him myself. And they shall publish it when? If they publish it, then I suppose any day. And what about me, Hetty? Did you write what I said? Mrs. Rosa Moan, always grumbling. grumbling. I know, but you don't. Oh, but I do. You're just too kind to notice. Let me see. <laughs> always grumbling as she marches around with a scowl stuck to her face. It's hardly surprising. She has nothing to do. And when she does try to do something, she's not too bright about it. Like when she tried to appoint a butler who ended up in prison for arson and theft while his predecessor just ran away with the loot. Perhaps it's best not to ask her to do anything at all. This is marvellous. It's marvellous, Hetty. Yes, come in. I'm so glad you think so. You wish to see me, Mum? Ah, oh, St Agnes, yes. We're expecting some guests. They're friends of Hetty. And Sheila. Of course, Sheila too. They're getting married in the parish and they need somewhere to stay. I thought we could open up the old groundsman's cottage. Oh, that's been shuttered since Jack left. Perhaps we could unshutter it? Yes, of course, Mrs Callender. I'll see to it. You're right. I do need to decide about Agnes and Sheila's jobs. Will Agnes become insufferable if I make her permanent housekeeper? She's insufferable now. <laughs> and Sheila, as cook? Oh, she's easy. So long as you don't talk to her while she's cooking or step on the floor she's just cleaned or... <gasps> Mrs. Kanda, I think it's coming. Would you call Lady Grenford, please, Hetty? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, hurry! Christening was well attended, but you've moved on. 
We should expect at least one bishop, possibly two, and no less than three members of parliament, including one from the upper house. Is it really necessary for every child to learn a musical instrument? It keeps them occupied, George. And I should say, a smattering of representation from one of the royal societies. It doesn't matter which. What is the meaning of this? Did nobody ever teach you to knock? It's Mrs. Callender. The baby is coming. Get the kitchen to boil water. Dispatch someone to bring the doctor. Well, come on, see to it. Who's got to sort out the linen? Oh, and I suppose they want food too. This is Calendar Hall, not a boarding house. But it's a wedding, and weddings are lovely. Are they? Well, don't expect a day off for it. Yes? Just wondered if there are any cakes left over from breakfast. This isn't a tea room, Gideon. Meals are for meal time, and you're getting mud all over the floor. Out, off you go, shoo! I've already said that ground staff may request refreshment. Well, and did you say you'd clean the floor? Look at it. Water, towels, sheets. It's the baby. Come on. My dear, we must get you to the bed. In order to achieve which, you need to go off the desk, Rosamond, dear. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, darling, please. Dear me, Rosamond, come along. You have done this before. I think it's coming. Everyone's in a flat. If it's another boy, I will teach him the names of all the beetles and the trees and the constellations of the night sky. If it's a girl, what will you teach her? If it's a girl, I shall hate it. This way, sir. George, if anything should happen to me, if it goes wrong... It won't. Don't be silly. Please don't mourn me. Let the light back in. Promise me, George. The doctor, my lady. Oh, good. Excellent. Dr. Sampson, please. Your patient. Oh. Agnes, more towels. George, out. Chop, chop. that we have a new Miss Calendar. Congratulations, George, it's a girl. How is Rosamond? Both doing splendidly. And both <laughs> expecting you. Have you seen her? Did you get a look? No, but I certainly heard her. She's got quite a voice, I can tell you. I think William's been in. Constance? I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, can you take this up to Mr. Callender? Hetty, what do you think you're doing? Your crease set. <gasps> have they published your article? They have, haven't they? Yes, they have. <laughs> Chronicles of a Country House, Part One. An ordinary day in pomp and circumstance manner. Am I in it? Hetty, you said you would. Dizzy Lizzy. <laughs> I hope you haven't written anything about me. Tray for Mrs. Callender? I'm just gonna take it up. I can do that. Well, trays are a kitchen job. Well, upstairs is my job, and that tray is going upstairs. Hetty! Oh, Hetty, thank you. Put it on the table. And you can say hello if you wish to Lily. That's a beautiful name. She's a beautiful girl. I hope you shall be friends. What? You can't be friends with a famous writer. All that matters is that she knows who she's meant to be and she does what she loves. You know who you are and you know what you love. You must do it. They've printed the article. Have they? Oh, Hedley, do you have it? Yes, I do. Well, let me see it, please. Don't rumple the paper. Mr. Canada doesn't like it when his paper's rumpled. He shall be so proud of you as I am, Hetty. So 
crap. Oh. oh. Mrs. Calendar, are you all right? Oh, what have we here, Rosamond? Moping around? And idle staff, by the look of it. I don't think she's very well, Lady Grimford. Oh, tush. Nothing that a little fresh air can't fix. Uh, no, really, I think she's taken poorly. Where's the nursery maid? I think she's with William. Good. I'll ask her to take Lily too, but Hetty, you must send someone to fetch the doctor. Tell them to be quick. George. George. Yes, I'll bring him. I don't know what all the fuss is about. We've had babies before. William was a baby before he became a horrid little child. Well, here we are. I thought he might like to see your new sister. Does she look like a baby? Yes, I believe she does. So did William. What's there to see? If you're not pleased, Constance, you could at least appear to be. For your mother's sake? Of course I'm pleased. She'll be my little friend. And I can teach her how to be a lady with my deportment and my delicate conversation. Was that convincing, Papa? I see you've been speaking with my godmother. It's your birthday next month, isn't it? When you were very little, we had a birthday picnic for Emily. Why don't we do that, eh? Then Lily can get to know her big sister, who I wouldn't want to change in any way. Not for a moment. What do you say? Could I bring my friends? Yes, of course. And they would be... And Hetty, and Sheila, and Agnes, and Gideon. Yes, of course. Your friends would be most welcome. George! Rosamond? Rosamond, my darling. The doctor's on his way. Thank you, Hetty. Will you receive him when he arrives? Bring him without delay. Yes, my lady. You should have some breakfast. It's Constance's birthday today. Had you forgotten? I don't know. Yes. I expect I had. She misses you. You could at least wish her happy birthday. birthday. 
You still have duties, George. Of course I have. Life goes on, eh? Chin up, old boy. It's been, what, three weeks? Time to move on. Happens all the time, East. Whatever it was that took my Rosamond, some silly little complication. She told us what she wanted, and it wasn't this. She said, don't mourn. I'm not mourning. It's just that I have. I have nothing left. So take this, please, and leave me in peace. We have a house to run. So run it! Good morning, Miss Constance. Many happy returns. Is anything being done to celebrate my sister's birthday? No, not that I've heard. Miss Canada said about a picnic, but that was before. Don't worry. Lizzie. We need to speak to the kitchen. And if Lady Grenford were to find out? Nobody should go without a birthday. Well, you can prepare food and take Master Edwin, but we remain at our posts. Miss Constance wanted all of us. She said we're her friends. We'll do trifle. Lemon tart. What about strawberries? They're fresh in. I'll get the basket. Rice pudding. Miss Constance loves her rice pudding, doesn't she? <laughs> right, come on then. Miss Constance, Master Edwin was asking if we could take him out to the garden. He was thinking, perhaps the folly. It might be nice to get some fresh air. Can't get in, do it. He asked for you, Miss Constance. These curtains are meant to be drawn. Mr. Callender's on his own. He's got even more need of assistance. I'm sure he'll advertise when he's ready. You know, Hattie's after the housekeeper's job. We're a team, you and me. Nobody would shoo you out of the kitchen. Hattie doesn't want to be a housekeeper. She'll be terrible forgetting the laundry because she's got a story in her head. Have you no ambition? Yes. This. In the garden, in the fresh air, where I answer to nobody's bell. What do you think? Great place. It's perfect. What is this? What are you doing here? I asked him to be here. For your birthday. You did this for me? Happy birthday, Miss Constance. Here. Your little sister. There. She's so beautiful. Yes. She is. What will you teach her, Constance? Very then. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? And I can show you how to climb trees and swim in ponds, how to chase rabbits and find snakes, how to get muddy, and what to think about when they're telling you off for it. <laughs> <coughs> what is this? Hmm? A picnic? Well, can nobody speak? It's my birthday picnic, Lady Renford. And these are my friends. Well, then the question is, do you have any trifle? Oh, uh, we have, yes. Good. 
Because I'm quite partial to a little trifle. May I? <clears throat> you know what I shall tell her when she's old enough? To value everyone she knows and every moment of her life. Every sweet, precious moment. mother I could have asked for. You always have something wise to say, and a hug to go with it. You were the first person to really, really believe in me and what I could do. My writing, my stories. Have you got that article in the newspaper? It's all about us. It's just a silly thing. Mrs. Callender didn't think so. Please, Hattie, fetch your book and read it to us. I think you must. I'm afraid it pokes fun at everyone. I do hope that includes me. It is a little ridiculous, is it not, to worry so much about who's who, the differences between us, the walls that separate one from another. Rosamond could never see them. She only ever saw the good in us, in all of us. Even in me. So let's honour her wishes, shall we? She said no mourning. And to let the light back in. We must try and do that. And remember her with joy. Please, Hetty, I would love to hear these writings. Keep up. Do you have to pack quite so much? And that wasn't a new pair of shoes you uh, bought in London. Wrong pair, that's all, because I ruined the old one slipping about on the deck. Well, you should have stayed in the cabin. Yeah, we should have stayed in America. Seasickness, bed bugs, no room to move, five days and night. Friends, Hetty, Gideon, Sheila, the people we love around us when we get married. Didn't Sheila used to pull your hair? That was a long time ago. If it was such a long time ago, why are we here? It's a bit quiet, isn't it? Do you think? I mean, have we seen anyone? Hurry up, Matthias! Oh, it's so good to see you. Both of you. <laughs> We're in the garden, most of us, at the folly. Well, it's called the folly. It's just follow the path. I think Harriet was hoping to unpack. I'm so sorry. I wish I could have written to you. Mrs. Callender, she... She died after the birth. Oh, no, that's, that's so sad. You can leave your bags here. Just just join everyone. Tell them who you are. I'm just getting something on. See you there, through the gate. Mr. Callender, sir? What else did you write about her? Rosamond. Not too bright about it. Not too bright. You thought so little of her. 
It was meant as a joke. She asked me to write it. You live under my it. roof, you eat my food, and all the while spreading poison about my wife. I would never do that. She was my friend. She was your mistress. Lady Glenford was right. Let the servants get above themselves of the next thing. Please, the please don't! Of us. Mr. Callum, the please! Little stories of their stupid little Stop lies. Stop it! You have no right to do that! Dreams. It's my writing! Oh, is it? And what is your writing with no one to publish it? You thought you could use me, didn't you? My newspaper. Well, you can rest assured we shall never take another word from you. And neither will anyone else. I shall see to it. You can think about that on the street. You are dismissed. Now pack your things and go. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet? Matthias! <laughs> you must be our guests from New York. I'm Lady Grenford. Perhaps Hetty wrote to you about me? She... I think she mentioned you. Yes. And my genial disposition, no doubt. Well, come in. Settle down. I don't bite all the time. We're saying goodbye to an old friend. I'm so sorry. And hello to a new one. Good afternoon, Matthias. Sir. I never thought I'd find myself here again. No home, no work, and nowhere to go. I don't even have my writing. And without that, what am I? For the first time in a very long time, I'm afraid where the road will take me. Mr Callender, please, I... All I know is that I'll have to follow it, because this time, there is no going back. Has there been any news? Nothing. She said she wouldn't let us know her dress when she had one. Get off! Oh, get off! <gasps> Eddie, what are you doing? Well, there we are, boys. Can't believe we're back here. I was live and breathe. You don't get it, do you? This whole thing's jinxed. First Hetty, now this. Get off! 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 Get off!